And the ball on the 25, first and 10 here as the second quarter gets underway. Mickey Bergeen to give up the middle that time. Plenty of running room for, let's see, that was number 24, I believe, Ty Howard. That was number 35, I think, uh, Tony Whitfield that time for the Eagles, Al. Uh, Whitfield new, new into the ball game. Fine run by Whitfield. Looks like he's limping off the field just a bit. Bill Musi on the stop that time for the Eagles. And we want to also thank Denise McCoskey for helping us run camera this evening. Second and two, Jeff. It's a big play for Norristown. They pull somebody down in the backfield, it's going to be a big advantage for them. Not to be, though. Lenny Moore up the middle. I'm sure he has the first down. However, the officials aren't nearly as sure as I am, or are they? Yes, they are. First down. Theron Ellis in there on the tackle assistant. Okay, so with 11-20 remaining here in the second quarter, scoreless ball game, but PW driving at the Norristown, a 14-yard line. Pergine, long count. Man in motion. They go up the middle to number 32, Keith Davis. Davis is swarmed under by Norristown defenders. No place to go that time for the Colonials. And in there for Norristown, several defenders, including Greg Reinhardt. Hard to miss Greg Reinhardt out there, isn't it? Comes from a football family, that's for sure. Brothers Jeff and Jerome, of course, went to Arizona State after playing some superb ball for Norristown High. Greg, only 6'4", 270. The runt of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think Jeff checked in at around 3.15 when he left for college. <laughs> Timeout on the field. Second down and nine for the Colonials. I'm yes, sure. it's hard to believe that Jeff and Jerome were twins. That's the truth. Jerome, in case you don't remember, went about 6'4", I guess maybe about 2'10", played forward on the basketball team. And then Jeff would just kind of rumble on by you at 6'4", <laughs> and around 3.15. I'll tell you, that's a trio you don't want to meet in a dark alley. Well, I don't know. Those guys are big and fine football players. And you never got their numbers wrong either. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Roger Grove not real happy with his defense out there at the moment. He may have had a word or two for them. I think they've, they've got to get themselves together. They know they're a good defensive unit. They take a lot of pride in their play also. You know, PW has consistently been picking up the big gainers on the first and second down plays. How many times so far in this uh, brief contest have we seen a third and two situation or third and one? And there's the Eagles band in the background. Pergine ready to play, 10-30 remaining in the second quarter. Second and nine. Keeps the ball himself, pass over the middle. Oh! Should have been caught that time by number 35, Tony Whitfield. Ball was thrown a little bit behind him, but I'll tell you, he had both hands on the ball, should have brought it in. Whitfield was open there in the right back. Big break. Flat, excuse me, number six right there. Dave Mark was a couple yards behind Whitfield on the coverage. Big break for the Eagles. It's now it's going to be third down and nine. And you've got to believe that, that if they don't get it right here, they're going to have to go for the field goal to put, try and put three points on the board. Exactly. Obviously, passing situation. I think they're going to pass the ball, no question. I think they might even go to the end zone here. Virgin's already put it up 10 times here tonight. Third and nine. Ball on the 13-yard line in ours down. Pergine back to pass. Looks, looks, he's got time. Dishes out to Lenny Moore, and oh, Lenny Moore drops the ball also. And Mickey pergine has got to be saying, what do I have to do to get a completion? I don't know, did Theron Ellis, number 77 that time, get his hand on the ball as it was coming over? Because I know Pergine had to kind of loft it over his head, and it looked like it might have been tipped. That's a distinct possibility. I didn't catch that, but uh, that certainly doesn't mean that it didn't occur. Because Lenny Moore, he looked like he had it perfectly, and he had to kind of lunge backwards for the ball, and I think it was tipped by Ellis. So the Eagles hold here. Fourth and nine, and in high school football, a three-point uh, play with the field goal, certainly not to give me. <laughs> a 30-yard attempt here. The hold is down. Oh, Pergine on the fake. They come up. He's got no place to go. They're going to stop him, I think. Oh, yes, they do. Finally knocked Pergine down, but he's close to the first down. Exactly. Tell Wise folks. play that time for Pergine. He was going to toss it out there, and all of a sudden he saw he said some running room on the right-hand side. Narstown player down on the near sideline. But what a hit Pergine took, too. Well, I'll a couple tell you, of Eagles converged on him at once. We've got a timeout from the officials. They're going to measure for a first down there. Now, you know, 
Pergine had no receivers out there, perhaps I think just because the snap was low, he picked that ball up. I think I don't think that was an intentional uh, fake on the no. part of the Colonials. Right. The snap was low. Pergine picked it up, rolled to his right, and made a heck of a play. If he gets this first down, it's really got to break Narstown's back. They, they make three big defensive plays Boy, with and a little it's help be from a... Colonial receivers. And PW has gotten it by about six inches, oh Jeff. Oh, my. Oh, there's a big break. So the ball is going to be marked, I believe, on the four-yard line, knocking on the door of PW. And give Mickey Pergine all the credit. Super individual effort that time by Mickey Pergine to get that first down. So the Norristown defense has to start all over again. Much tougher to stop someone from the three-yard line than the 13. We'll call it the four. First and goal to go from the four-yard line. Four-yard line, pardon me. PW looking at a possible field goal. Now they can look at a possible seven. Lenny Moore, and he's pulled down in the backfield. Nice play by Reinhardt. Reinhardt, number 64 for the Eagles that time. Rob Major. Reinhardt made the initial stop that time. You're Big right. Big play. Loss of a yard, second down and five. I'm kind of surprised. They've been having such great success running to the right side, and this time they decided to go left. Maybe a loss of about a yard there. And you're, that's exactly right, second down and five, and your confidence building on the Narstown side. Everybody close, stacked on the line. Pergine to pass, rolling out, got a man open, Lenny Moore, touchdown! Nice play by Pergine and Moore. So the Colonials on the scoreboard early right here. Five yard pass, Pergine to Moore, and Plymouth White Marsh ahead six to nothing with 9.32 remaining in the first half. I'll tell you, big turn of events there. Plymouth White Marsh set up for a 30-yard field goal attempt, which certainly isn't a guaranteed play in high school football. And they come away with six points, perhaps seven here as they go for the conversion. Once again, Virginia your holder. And daring play selection and a lot of confidence in Mickey Virginia's talents. Kick is good. Plenty of foot, too. Who was it that booted that, Jeff? Thanks for asking me before I could get it out to ask you. Looks like number 56. Your guess is as good as mine. I believe that's who it is. It's number 56 for the Colonials. That would be that's Jeff Gamberg, if we are correct. We hopefully are. Yes, it's 56. Just want to point out, even though PW, thankfully, wearing white uniforms with red numbers, awfully tough to see what's going on here under the lights. I can't believe they don't, they don't always face us after every play and show us who made the tackle, who carried the ball. You know, you'd think that would be a courtesy, but it usually doesn't happen. Well, hold it. You mean our on-field spotters aren't with us yet? Yeah, well, the, uh, the the radio equipment got here late, and they, they couldn't get the relay system from the field up to the booth, so you you know, know, they, were, told, they were rendered useless. I told Tony Coya, the director of communications here, we wanted the spotters, we wanted the CBS chalkboard. You think he had just arranged for something? Uh, no respect for us. He got the blimp for us, which was nice. True, <laughs> true. Very nice sight here hovering over Roosevelt Field. Let's see, back deep for the Eagles on the near side, number two, Danny Boyd. Who was in the middle there? Forrest Davis. Davis. And Stereo, and Prince and Bryant on the far sideline. So your three starting backs as they go for a low kick. kick. And Narstan will take that. They come up through the middle. Oh, still going is Brian Word. And I'll tell you, he must be a hurdle. The track coach ought to take a look at Brian Word. Came up through the middle, ball all the way up to the 47 yard line. A 22 yard return that time by Ward. Excellent. Oh, that didn't fool too many people. <laughs> Brian Word very happy on the near sideline. So the Eagles with some good operating room here. Do you think they'll open things up or stay on the ground, Jeff? Narstown passes this time, definitely. The voice of Con Well, it could be right there in the I formation now. Out of the wishbone. Forrest Davis around left end. Got a blocker out front. Davis puts on the burners. Knocked out of bounds after a gain of about four yards. And Keith Davis taking out Forrest Davis that time. Second and two, Jeff. Cassano hands off to Forrest Davis up the middle. And Davis good for the first down. Two big runs by Forrest Davis. Well, you see Davis's legs just keep churning even when he's dragging the tacklers on with him. 
Eagles exceptionally lucky to have two fine tailbacks with the uh, talent of Forrest Davis and Danny Boyd. Frank Cassano, first and 10, 8.46 remaining in the first half. This time to Danny Boyd, the second back through. Oh, and he's pulled down by the ankles that time. Number 56, Gamberg, big play that time. Jeff Gamberg, excellent penetration that time, taking Forrest Davis down from behind. So the Eagles coming out, running the ball three straight times. They've moved it up to about, oh, call it the 36-yard line. 8.20 to go here in the first half. The Eagles down 7 to nothing. Second and eight, they're calling this. Cassano hands off to Danny Boyd on the draw. Same play, same result. Gamberg that time again. Well, Danny Boyd you. broke open a 30-yarder in the first quarter with that delay draw. And now you got a third and nine situation. I think he lost the yard that time. The official scoreboard still says third and eight. I say it's third and nine from the 37-yard line of Plymouth White Marsh. Well, Jeff, I'm quite surprised here. They still have yet to put it up in the air. I would assume they're going to now. PW has been getting a good rush on Cassano all evening. And once again, they're doing it, forcing him out of the pocket. Cassano brought down before he can get the ball away. And it's going to be fourth down and 11. And the crediting tackle that time, the number 55, Tony Bias. And I think the credit for that play has to go to the defensive secondary to Plymouth White Marsh. There's no one open for Norwich Town. Frank has no place to throw the ball. And Frank is taping a very, very deep drop that time, but he just had no time. You're right. Well, this was an inspired defensive series here for PW. Colonial's playing one heck of a game, 7 to nothing. They lead Norwich Town with 7.05 remaining in the first half. Cassano back to punt. Ball spotted at the... 40-yard line, another high snap. Once again, no rush. Cassano, plenty of time. His boot's going to be by the sideline. Fair catch signaled and taken at the 15-yard line. And that time it was number 22, Ernest Brewer, brought the ball down for the Colonials. Boy, they've got to work on that, those snaps there, the long snaps. You know, if I'm PW, I've got to think, well, maybe next time if we have decent position, we'll try to rush them, hoping that there's going to be another bad snap. Well, this time you want to see a big defensive series from Norristown if you're an Eagles fan, folks. Norristown's got to come up big here against the Colonials, shut them down, get the ball back for the offense before this half ends. The Colonials have pretty much had their way this evening on offense. And we have a flag immediately. It's going to be motion, I think, against one or other ball club on the line. I think there was some movement on the left side of the PW line. It's going to be a quick call. Offsides, Plymouth That's White it. March. So, Colonials first and 15. We'll spot the ball at the 20 yard line, drop it back five. So, from their own 15, Colonials with 15 to go for a first down. <laughs> Once again, folks, if you joined us late, Colonials, five-yard scoring play, Mickey Pergine to Lenny Moore, and the conversion by Jeff Gambard gives them a 7 to nothing lead in this ballgame. Pergine hands off up the middle this time. Number 75 in on the tackle for Narstown. That's Mike Lynch. A minimal gain that time, perhaps four yards on the play, so it'll be second down and 11. Pergine looks to pass. He's got a man open across the middle. Oh, I'll tell you, tried to throw the needle that time to number 81, Pete Smarecki. Smarecki couldn't come down with it. Pergine with a bullet that time. And perhaps a little too hard that time on the pass, a little too much zip. Bounced right off Smarecki's hands. So Narstown with a chance to shut down the Colonials here on this offensive possession. It'll be third down and 11. But I'll tell you, the Colonial receivers run nice patterns. And Smarecki, a big target for Pergine. 6'2", isn't he? 6'2", 180, that's right. And he's only a junior. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
big rush this time from Norris down. Theron Ellis throws him down for a safety, maybe. There it is, folks. Or is he calling fourth down? Oh, yep. it's it's going to be down. fourth down on the one oh, yard my. line, Jeff. On the one inch line, Alan. Yep, my he did, goodness. He didn't wave for the safety. I, I saw that hand go up. I thought he was going to wave for the safety, but he just put up the fist signaling fourth down. Mickey Virginia had no chance that time. I believe it was Greg Reinhardt coming in from the right side, wasn't it? I thought it was number 61, Jim, Jim Robinson. Robinson. And then Theron Ellis chased him down from the left side. And Nothing Ellis, Perjean could do that time. Ellis just manhandled Perjean. And that's what Norristown must do in this ballgame. They have got to put pressure on Mickey Perjean to stop him from having so much time to set up and throw the ball. And now they're going to be punting from the end line. And we have a flag. I believe he stepped safety. out. It is a he safety. He stepped out. Exactly right, Alan. Stepped beyond the rear line. And that is not what you want to do in that situation. The offender that time, number 55, Troy Bias, costs the Colonials two points, and they'll have to punt the ball to Norristown. Exactly. And so I believe they punt it. Where did they, don't they take it from the 20-yard 20 20 yard line, line and punt yes. it? Uh -huh. So the Eagles will come up with some excellent field position here. So you said the Norristown defense had to come up big on this last defensive series, try to create a turnover. What more could you ask for? Theron Ellis with the big sack. Forcing Perjean back to the one-inch line about, and then the punter walking over the end line, and the Eagles re awarded with the safety. Well, that's what you have to practice on those plays. When you're putting from the end zone, you cannot step beyond the end line. Automatically a safety, so it took an additional play, but Norristown gets two points out of it. So 7-2. to two. It looks like the, the Mets and the Reds playing tonight. 7-2 to two here. 5-14 <laughs> remaining in the first half. Eagles down by five, but as we mentioned, they'll be receiving a punt and in high school, it looks like they punt from the 25-yard line. Oh, no, it is the 20-yard line. I'm sorry. It's tough to look at. It's also tough to look at the uh, the yard markers here at Roosevelt Field from our perspective. We do make a lot of excuses, don't we? We can't see the numbers. We can't see the yard markers. Why are we here? I think the fog is setting in because they had nobody else to do did this the, game. Did the fog lift yet? I, I haven't noticed. And we have Boyd Davis in the middle, and on the far side, Ryan back deep to receive for the Eagles. And you've got three burners out there. And of course, Brian Word also out there for Narstown, the man who took the last kick as an up back. And the middleman in the up position, number 30, Brett Queen, and a very impressive sophomore. Jeff Gamberg will handle the punting chores here. Gamberg under a little bit of pressure here to get a nice one off. Well, we saw he has an excellent leg. He can really get his teammates out of the hole here. Nice punt. Line drive, they're going to field it. Forrest Davis is going to take the ball at his own 32. Drives right up the middle. He's got running room. Oh, he's got one man to beat. A game-saving oh, tackle that time by PW's number 44 in on the play. That was Keith Galley. I hope I have the pronunciation of his name right, but Keith Galley made the stop. I'll Otherwise, Forrest Davis broke right through the wedge. He had only one man to beat, and that was Galley. Super blocking that time by, by the Norristown unit. As you mentioned, Forrest Davis split the seam up the middle, had one man to elude, and Galley brought him down. But all in all, a 10, 20, 25 yard punt return for Forrest Davis. They go from the I formation. Frank Cassano, your quarterback, just under five minutes remaining in the second quarter. They go to Danny Boyd. He's got room up the middle. Plenty of room right side. It's going to be a touchdown, folks. Danny Boyd in a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown. 42 yard run for Danny Boyd. And Norristown right back in this ball game as they take the lead eight to seven. And what a turn of events in the span of one minute, Alan. Well, so, Jeff, it's truly incredible. Danny Boyd there on that delay draw. We saw it work for a 30-yard piece of territory in the first quarter. This time he took it. He went up to the middle, made his initial cut to the right-hand side, then cut back again, and that's when he found the opening down the right sideline. It was a good look by Danny Boyd. He saw he had the right side wide open. And when the foot race started, you knew Danny Boyd was going to win it. Lenny Moore couldn't hawk him down, nor could Ernest Brewer. You know, as a sophomore last season, we heard so much about the talents of Danny Boyd. And they're going for the two-point conversion. Cassano rolls out, flag on the play. As I was saying, we heard so much about the talents of Danny Boyd and already the inevitable comparisons to Wayne Denson. And that type of move was what Denson was so brilliant at, making that quick step and then taking off with that quick speed. Let's see which way the flag is going. I think it's going to be against Nars down. Illegal procedure against, against the, Eagles. the Eagles. So drop it back five, and I'm sure they'll still go for the two-point conversion. Of course, the uh, thinking behind that, they're ahead eight to seven. It doesn't matter whether you win by one or two points, but to be ahead by three, it requires PW to kick a field, field goal, goal to tie the game, not to win the game. Well, so quite Roger a turnaround Rose. here in the last two minutes of play, Jeff. I'll tell you, and it was all started by that big play from Theron Ellis sacking Mickey Pergine at the one-yard line. 
It took the Eagles 26 seconds to get these points and two offensive plays. And two nice plays by Forrest Davis on the run back and of course by Danny Boy, that stellar run, 42 yard scamper for a touchdown. You know, that was a quite daring decision going back a few plays there on Davis's big run back. He let the ball bounce a couple of times and instead of letting it go behind him, all of a sudden he snagged it out of midair and took it, gave the Eagles a great position and allowed Boyd to capitalize for the touchdown. So with 4-4-8 remaining here in the second quarter, the Eagles come thundering back to take an 8-7 advantage. Boy, not even two games under his belt. Danny Boyd well over 260 yards rushing, and he's got a 42-yard touchdown run tonight, a 47-yarder against Bishop Kendrick. Not too bad. Well, when you carry the ball nine times for 166 yards, um, you're going to you, have a phenomenal season. You <laughs> average close to 18 yards a carry, yes. <laughs> Well, it was a bad start, you know. Could have done better, probably, if he had played the third and fourth quarter. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, we're just about ready to get underway here. You know, PW still will get the ball back with about four minutes to play. Plenty of time to get back on the board before halftime. Cassano drops the pass. Nice block that time. Oh, he's pulled under and he throws the ball up in the air. Uh, <laughs> Frank did a little uh, alley-oop underneath there. I don't understand that play. I, I don't believe you can advance the ball once it's uh, no. out of the uh, quarterback's hand, so it really didn't matter when he, that he got rid of the ball there. Well, well, that time one of the PW defenders broke clear right through the line. Forrest Davis made an attempt to block him and then released to go downfield, and that defender just crunched Frank. That's about the only way you can put it. <laughs> PW defense has not played poorly in this ball game. Or you can even say they've played well. Okay, that's another <laughs> way of putting it. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. I just wanted to give you an option. Thank you. And, and I welcome. appreciate it so much. I realize you do. Eight to seven Eagles, 448 to play in the first half. It's getting nippy out here now. I'm getting tired of standing. <laughs> you mean they didn't have your golden grave stools? Well, delivered? Tony Coya took the stool, of course. You know, he's the, the big honcho up here. He's got to sit on the blue, newly painted blue seat. Remember, he is older. He is old, that's right. He's very old. And his hair is thinning, so I guess he ought to be able to sit. <laughs> you are going to be fine. You're going to be working for Abington next week. You realize this? You're going to be doing the ghosts. The galloping the ghosts. <laughs> that's uh, the galloping ghosts. Eagles getting well, set. Let's roll that wind off. action on the Chesapeake as the wind blows through his hair that's left. <laughs> the kick from Norristown. It's going to roll out of bounds, perhaps. Oh, they field it. Picked up by Ernest Brewer, I believe. He fights his way back upfield for about six yards. Going to be down at the 25 yard line. Ernest Brewer, a lucky man, tried to Ooh. run without holding the ball. Yeah, that's uh, not really easy to do. It's one of the key factors in football. You must have the ball in your possession before you run with it. You know, it's taken me six years of doing these games for Narstown, but I have finally come to realize that point. It's it's because you work hard at it, Alan. You study the game. You're a student of the you're a student of football, hey, and it shows. I was here 15 minutes before the game tonight. I That's mean, That's right. What more do you want as far as preparation? Absolutely amazing. Sometimes the things that you do, and it's all for the Eagles. Certainly not for all the fan cards we get. <laughs> 4.34, folks, remaining in the first half. Eagles ahead, 8-7. to seven. Of course, <laughs> Norristown in their home blue jerseys, white pants. PW in their all-white uniforms with the red letters. Very succinctly put. And I'll tell you, once again, I mentioned it last week, the field in excellent condition here. Give the grounds crew and the maintenance staff here at Roosevelt Field a lot of credit, and the press box looks super, too. They had some extra paint, I guess, around here because um, they've spruced this place up. Notice how many Methacton players are here this evening? Yes. The Eagles taking them on this Friday night at yes. Roosevelt Field, the 20th. That time, Keith Davis, I believe, was the ball carrier. He gets only about a yard and a half. Reinhardt and Taylor over there on the tackle. Reinhardt and Taylor sounds like a law firm. Just a okay. Thought. What do you say? Does PW play conservatively here, or do they air it out with four minutes to play in the first half? Throw the ball. Mickey Bergeen's had great success this evening. Throw the don't ball. Have official stats, but he must have put it up at least 12, 13 times this evening. Second and nine, 352 left to go in the half. And they hand off up the middle. That shows you what we know. However, he didn't get more than a yard, so perhaps he should have thrown the ball. 
Let's see, leading the way that time, number 79, Greg Reinhardt. Another thing I'd like to mention, it's nice to see so many Norristown faculty members here. Of course, the faculty section right be below us, underneath the press box, and um, numerous Norristown teachers here to come out to watch the students. That's good to see. Principal Barry Spencer here for just about every game that I can remember for the last two years. Pergine back to pass, over the middle, got Ooh. a man open. Nice hit by Taylor, short of the first down. What a bullet by Pergine, though. My goodness, he really unloads the receiver that time. Keith Davis, number 32. You're right. And Taylor right there, the linebacker, the linebacker's responsibility to cover that back, emerging from the backfield, and Taylor was right there to stop the play. It'll be fourth down and, oh, almost six yards to go. So Norristown's going to get possession once again. Harold Golston will be back deep along with Dave Mark. And if Norristown can put another score on the board here, Allen, got to boost them going in at, in at halftime and put Mr. Momentum on their side. The Eagles' defense has really turned around in this second quarter. High snap, Gamberg has it. Oh! Away. High, but very, very short. And not too much of a bounce. It's going to be brought down at the 40. Uh, I'll the tell Eagles. you, Theron Ellis was in there that time, just missed blocking the ball. Got way up in the air. But not a bad result for Norristown as they take over, as you said, Alan, on their own 41 yard line. 223 left in the first half. I think you're going to see uh, a couple Danny Boyd runs this time. And if perhaps that doesn't work, Narstown, I'm sure, will go to the air. 2-16 left to go in the half. 8-7, Narstown. Last time Danny Boyd touched the ball, it was good for a 42-yard touchdown scamper. Out of the eye formation. This time they go to Forrest Davis off the left side. He eludes one tackler, spins off another, gets, oh, about six yards on the play. And I'll tell you, that was all individual effort on the part of Forrest Davis. And Lenny Moore, the man bringing him down for the Colonials. You're right, Forrest Davis, a one-man show that time. Well, I think the uh, high percentage of players going both ways for the Colonials is a testimony to the fact that they are not that deep a ball club. Uh, Narstown this year, several players going both ways, especially on the lines. Right, Reinhardt, Ellis, Taylor. Musi. Cassano, back to pass, second and five. Oh, Dave Mark, gotta be pass interference. Oh my. No, they oh were my. both going for the ball that time. Tough play. I thought the, the contact was before. Dave Mark that time. The ball just down in front, maybe a yard or so too far. Okay. So apparently that contact was legitimate, folks. It's the first time I've ever been right on one of these calls. Well, you waited to see the guy didn't throw the flag. That was a tough call, hey, huh? It could have been a delayed flag. Jeez. All right, folks. I got it in with the officials. Third down and five. Frank Cassano, your quarterback, number five. Danny Boyd, Forrest Davis in the backfield for Norristown. There it is, Danny Boyd up the middle. This time the draw doesn't fool anybody. And least of all, number 52 for the Colonials. And number 52, Steve Borkowski. Borkowski, a fine tackle that time on Danny Boyd. Brought him down by the shoelaces. It'll be fourth and five, and the Colonials are going to get a chance to get this ball back with a minute remaining here in the first half. And it's up to Frank Cassano to boot it for the Eagles. I think I'd be calling timeout if I were Lee Andrews. Still letting that clock run down. Narstown's going to take all the time that they can before they kick this ball. You've got 30 seconds. Cassano, your punter. Long count. Clock's down to 42. You're right, Jeff. They should have called the time. Boy, he is just ticking that clock off. Nice play by Cassano. And a good boot to, right on top of it. Lenny Moore fields it at his own 23-yard line. And he runs out of bounds. He's got 31 seconds left. Now that makes no sense to me when you have a minute and four on the clock and you finally take possession with 31 left. You could have had it with a minute left. Exactly. That time on the return, Lenny Moore was thinking of reversing directions and heading out to his left side. Then he saw number 51, Bill Musi, standing right there in front of him. <laughs> 31. Well, let's see how Bill per or Mickey Pergeen uh, performs here with under a half minute to go. So the ball will be on the 31-yard line with 31 seconds remaining in the half. Eagles oh, nice. ahead by a point. And a decent crowd here at Roosevelt Field now that the uh, 8 o'clock hour has passed. That's in real time as opposed to our video. Exactly, delay. you folks. It's probably about uh, 6 o'clock and you're sitting down to dinner watching this ball game. Of course, these games shown on tape delay. And we have a timeout taken here. That was Lenny 30 Moore, seconds too late. <laughs> on that return. 
is right on the Eagles sideline. And there you see the Narstown cheerleaders. By the way, Jeff, have you managed to pick up their names yet? Uh, I'm too far out of school now, Alan, to even remember these young ladies. Uh, this has never stopped you before. Okay, I know a couple here. I know that the three young ladies with the blue sweaters on whom I assume are tri-captains or some such uh, designation. We have Danielle Barrett, Lisa Pasfa, and oh, yep. the third one. I don't know. Well, that's your halftime assignment. I want you to go down, <laughs> sure. get all their names. No problem. There's about 30 of them this year. <laughs> Do they have a JV or is that everybody? Lenny Moore still being attended to there on the Eagles sideline. And he's being helped up and he's walking off on his, under his own power. So that's good to see Lenny Moore apparently okay. Eight to seven, Eagles up, 31 seconds to go. And Tony Coya tells me it's Lisa Mascaro is the third young lady, the third tri-captain the, on the cheerleading squad. Mr. Clutch comes Mr. through again. Mr. Clutch. Now, if you ask me the Villanova cheerleaders, I can help you out. <laughs> 31 seconds, folks. We're ready to play. Mickey Virginia, your quarterback for PW. Hands off up the middle to Keith Davis. Davis gets about five and hits a brick wall, and the brick wall consisting of a Mike Taylor and number 61, Jim Robinson. Jim Robinson Clock is playing running. a fine game here this evening. One of the players we haven't mentioned too much in the first couple of ball games. I think PW content just to let this clock roll down as we enter halftime. Nine seconds. They're not, there's not going to be another snap of the ball, folks, as Norristown's going to go into the locker room ahead eight to seven, three, two, one, and the first half is over. And Norristown and Roger Grove have to be happy going into the locker room with a one-point advantage. Alan and I'll be back in just a moment with our look at this first half of play. Back here at halftime at Roosevelt Field, Narstown Eagles up on top of the Plymouth White Marsh. Colonials by an 8-7 count. I'm Alan Rowley along with Jeff Brandon. And Jeff, um, very interesting first half. PW really dominated throughout most of the first quarter. It was a scoreless first quarter, we should mention. PW finally getting a big break when Mickey Pergeen scampered for a first down when PW was trying for about a 30-yard field goal. Pergeen getting up the right sideline for about 11 yards. Then he fired a five-yard touchdown strike to Lenny Moore. It made it Plymouth White Marsh seven to nothing. Narstown though, finally, they came up with a big defensive effort about midway through the second quarter and leading the charge, Theron Ellis. Well, that's right, Theron Ellis made a big defensive play. Of course, coming off that score, we said Narstown defense had to come up big and they did. Theron Ellis with a big sack of Mickey Pergeen, um, drop a signal caller at about the one yard line, forcing a, a Plymouth White Marsh punt and the punter stepped beyond the, uh, the back line of the end zone. Of course, the safety, the ensuing punt, big run by Forrest Davis, perhaps a 25 yard run. And the first play from scrimmage, a 42-yard run by Danny Boyd, who went up the middle, cut to his right, and just outraced the PW defenders to the end zone. And uh, there it stands, 8-7, to seven, Narstown ahead. And I, after that scoreless first quarter, I was very impressed by Plymouth White Marsh. They held their own against a very tough Narstown team. And Narstown certainly um, has the work cut out for them in the second half to win this ballgame. Well, you're speaking of being impressed about Plymouth White Marsh. I think that we obviously knew that their offense had a very talented crew, some excellent running backs in Keith Davis and Lenny Moore, along with Ty Howard coming out of the backfield, and of course, strong arm quarterback in Mickey Pergine. But I have been surprised by their defensive uh, play here this evening. They have really pretty much, except for Boyd's 42 yard run and a big 30 yarder he had in the first quarter, they pretty well dominated the line of scrimmage here this evening, and they've been getting a tremendous pass rush on Frank Cassano, forcing him out of the pocket throughout the evening. I think you hit on a key right there. They've had great pass pressure on Frank Asano. Frank has not had time to set up, and I think that another factor there is the fact that the uh, the secondary is playing so well because Frank has no one to throw to, and that gives the uh, the defensive line more time and a greater opportunity to, to catch Cassano in the backfield, and that's exactly what they're doing. All around, PW playing a fine ball game. You have one major lapse where Danny Boyd runs 42 yards for a touchdown. Otherwise, Boyd has been basically contained except for that one big run he had in the first quarter. So two big runs, and besides that, PW playing a good game defensively. 
Uh, on the pregame show, I said that we'd probably be seeing a battle here between two of the finest quarterbacks in all of Southeast Pennsylvania. We obviously knew of the skills and talents of Frank Cassano, but Mickey Pergine has definitely shown why he is an outstanding senior signal caller. He has a rifle arm, a very tight spiral, and an excellent follow through over the top. And boy, I'll tell you, he can rifle the ball over the middle. He can throw deep. He can dink off the little short passes to the safety valve. He's really put on quite a show here in the first half. Well, I'll tell you what, Pergine has a nice array of receivers to which to throw. He's not limited in that at all, and I think that in this head-to-head -head competition, Cassano against Pergine, if that's the way you want to square it up, uh, Mickey Pergine is the winner so far in this ball game. Frank Cassano, as you mentioned, hasn't had time to throw, hasn't found his receivers. I don't even know how many completed passes he has, if he has one at all. Coming into the third quarter here, Narstown will obviously receive the second half kickoff. I think it's very important that they get a very good series going, especially on the ground, because as you said, except for a couple runs by Boyd and Davis, they haven't been that impressive via the ground route. And more importantly, I think it's important that uh, being repetitive with the important part, but it's a key factor here, Narstown's defense. They started tightening the screws midway through the th second quarter, and they have to do the same here in the second half. They really have to stop Plymouth Whitemarsh and the big gains they've been getting out of their backfield. And hopefully Lenny Moore, who was injured on a return play very late in the closing moments of the second quarter, will be able to return because he has really been about half of the PW offense. Well, I think the Norristown defense is tightening up, and they did that in the second half of the, uh, the second quarter. But I think you're right. They've got to tighten up on that run, and that'll stop Mickey Pergine's passing attack. Absolutely. No question about it. And I think that Norristown offensively has got to be, become a little bit more diversified. Give Frank Asano a couple pops over the middle. Just throw to his backs coming out. Um, give Frank a chance to shine here. Go with the bootleg from Cassano. I think they're being a little bit too predictable in this ballgame. And you know, they haven't really used the wishbone that much this evening. They've really been surprising. dropping out into the eye formation. Yeah, that's surprising. I think the wishbone was extremely effective against Bishop Kenrick. Uh, it gives an, another facet the defense has to worry about, and it's a facet that most defenses don't see on a regular basis. So I look for that uh, more in the second half also. Okay, at the outset of this contest, you predicted a 21-7 score. I just wanted to remind everyone. 10. 21 to 10. I think you're changing, but I'll let no, you no, go no, there. No. Okay. We, we can check the tapes when we get back to the studio. 21-10. Okay, but here at halftime, Narstown up 